Hello Sugar Geeks, Liz here and Christoph. And today we're going to be making a beautiful bridal kokumbush. All right, the first thing we're going to do is our pastry cream. So we're going to pour our milk, then we're going to add our vanilla. And if you don't have a vanilla bean, you can use vanilla extract. Half of the sugar, and we're going to bring this to a boil. During this time, I will mix my egg yolk, the other half of sugar, mix, mix, mix. Add the cornstarch, mix, mix, mix. The reason why we add half of the sugar into the milk is to avoid the milk to attach and burn on the bottom of your pan. Ah, oh, interesting. We have our milk that is boiling. We're going to pour it over the egg yolk. Mix, 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 mix. Okay, and then we're going to pour it back into our pot, going to uh, cook our uh, pastry cream for about a minute in a medium heat. Until it's boiling, and that's it. Nice, super easy. To cool it down, we're going to cool it down into a small sheet pan with a, a plastic wrap on the bottom. Uh, so we're going to create a really thin layer mm -hmm. and that will cool down pretty fast. Okay, now let's make the patachou. So we're going to make a big batch uh, today so we can pipe approximately uh, 300 cream puff with this batch. So let's put the milk inside our pot. Then we add the water, add a little bit of sugar, then our salt. What else are we adding, Liz? Butter, European butter. European butter, 82% fat content. This is plugra. This is actually an important distinction because if you have a butter that is not European, it could have a much higher water content and throw off the recipe. Then we turn the stove into a medium heat. The goal is to bring this to a boil and to simultaneously get butter and boiling liquid on the same time. If you wanna see Christophe's full length tutorial on how to make the perfect pat of shoe. We have one right there. Oh, uh, right here. No, it's right here. Oh, uh, right here. It's right here. Uh, it's actually right here. <laughs> right here. <laughs> All right, it's boiling. Butter is melted. Turn off the heat and add the flour. So you want to sift the flour before adding it. So that's going to avoid to create lumps inside your dough. So right now I mix uh, all the flour and the water to combine all the ingredients together and to form this beautiful dough. That looks like mashed potatoes. So now that all our uh, ingredients are combined together, we're going to turn on the heat again. To medium. To dry out our dough. So this is a lot of pat of choux and I'm noticing it's taking a little bit longer to dry than the regular cream puff. Yes, because there is more uh, quantity and more volume, so you're going to uh, have to spend uh, much more time on drying the dough, right? Yes. Our patachou is ready. Okay. You can see this uh, nice uh, golden coloration on the bottom of the pan. So now we want to transfer our uh, dough inside the mixing bowl. With the paddle attachment. So now we want to mix our dough in order to cool down before adding the eggs. Right, because it's If really it's too hard, hot, it might cook the eggs mm. and you might have some like lumps and some egg white cook first inside your dough. So you want to cool down the dough first. And that's pata scrambled eggs. Yes. So once your dough has cooled down a little bit and you can see it by putting your hands on the side of the bowl and if you're not burning your hands and you can hold the bowl, that means your uh, pata choux is cold enough to add the eggs. So we're going to add the eggs one at a time. Et voilà. Nice. Our pata choux is ready. Okay, let's pipe them. All right, so let's set up our piping bag. We have a tip of, what diameter is that? It's is... about one centimeter, because we're making smaller cream puffs than we did for the previous video. These are tiny and small and cute. So a little tip to avoid uh, your uh, dough or uh, mix to come out of your, uh, your tip is I always take a piece of uh, the piping bag and put it inside the tip. So this way it's protecting the batter to leak out. And then you fold the bag over your hand and then put the batter in there. I like to fill my piping bag halfway so you have more control. And then we're going to pipe our cream puff. About how big are we going here? So about one inch diameter. You press, you stop, and you twist. Beautiful. These are pretty close together too, maybe only a half inch apart. Yes. And once again, we are using the sill pane from Matt Fur. So we have some nice even air coming from the bottom and it just helps the shoe to brown a little bit more evenly. But you can use a sill pat or you can use parchment paper. I think most importantly is just trying to get all of your little shoes the same size so they all bake evenly and making sure the tops look really pretty for something like a croquembouche. We're making like a wedding croquembouche too, extra fancy. 
you do a croc en bouche is for uh, mostly a celebration mm -hmm. uh, as a, a wedding or a baptism. Baptism. <laughs> baptism. <laughs> exactly. So we're just using some water to kind of push down those little pointy parts. Correct. It's going to make your cream puff smoother. And then we're going to bake these in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 25 to 30 minutes or until they're nice and golden brown. Our cream puff are baked. All right, Liz. Our cream puff are cold, okay. ready to be filled. Okay. We let them outside for about 30 minutes mm -hmm. or until completely cold. Yes, you don't want to fill warm puffs. So what we're going to do is poke a hole first. So we're using a smaller piping tip to kind of pre-poke the holes. Mm. What do you think? Do you think we have enough? Mm. Maybe a few more. Okay, let's set up our piping bags. So we're going to put our pastry cream in a bowl. Okay, nice, nice and cold. What do you nice know? and cold. Now we want to mix our pastry cream to smooth it out a little bit. Let's fill our piping bag. Now we take the cream puff, and then you want to press and fill them all the way. So you should see a little bit of issue cream coming out of your uh, cream puff, and that's an indication of your cream puff being full. All right, let's do our caramel okay. to dip our beautiful cream puff. All right, I'm excited. So to do our caramel, we're going to start with our water. Then we have our glucose that is scaled out into a bowl. A and you see how sticky it is? Yeah. So I have a little trick. We're going to put this in the microwave oh. for about 30 seconds. That's going to liquefy our glucose and it's going to be easier to remove and put it in our water. Next, we add the sugar. So we're putting the candy thermometer in here. Caramel is a range of colors. You could have a light caramel to a dark caramel. We're going for kind of a medium. Yes, that's right. So let's put this in medium heat. And we're not going to stir or we are going to stir? No, we're not going to stir. Once it starts boiling, we can mix once and just let it on the side. And why the, is that? The, otherwise, it, it can crystallize your, your, your sugar. But um, in order to protect the crystallization of your sugar, we are adding the glucose. And the glucose helps the sugar to not crystallizing. We're just going to bring this to a boil. Once the caramel is ready, we need to dip them right away. It looks like our caramel is uh, taking uh, a little coloration over here, Liz. So we're almost to 340 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm thinking like close to uh, 170, 175 okay. Celsius. All right, we're just about uh, there. Just right below 350. So now the, the caramel will continue to cook a little bit. But in order to cool down our caramel, I will take a, a bowl of water and put my entire pot on the water just to stop oh, yes. the cooking of the caramel. Now we're going to dip, right? Yes. All right. Do we have to do this quickly? Yes. All right. Because the caramel will right. harden. I prepare a little uh, flexi mold over here that is round shape. We take the cream puff and then we dip the cream puff inside our caramel and then we put it in our mold. The mold evenly distributes a layer of caramel that we have on the top of our cream puff. So you dip the cream puff into the caramel mm -hmm. and then into, into the pretzel sugar. Okay, so now uh, our caramel becomes thicker. So what I will do is I will pull it back a little bit on the stove just to liquefy it, but not continue to cook the sugar. Just bring it back to a liquid consistency. Okay, Christoph, how are we attaching these guys? All right, so we are uh, going to use our caramel to glue all the cream puff together. Okay. We are using a, a metal cone from Matfair, actually. And this is a, a mold, pretty much, to make your uh, croque en bouche empty in the center. Some people use styrofoam cones with parchment paper over the top of it. Pretty much the first one, I'm going to dip it on a sideway, and then we keep on going. Now we are doing the next layer. So you want to dip the bottom and the side. So the bottom will attach on the bottom layer and the side will attach to the one that is on the side. I'd say this probably took us five hours. It's a whole day project. Huh? We're going to do some spoon sugar around, a couple flowers, make it a little bit more uh, elevated. So that's it, guys. That is how you make a beautiful bridal croque and bouche. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ding the little bell if you want to see more videos like this one. Until next time, I'm Liz. I'm Christoph. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye.